Good morning, family. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for the opportunity to be in your presence this morning. Thank you for the privilege, God. We, we get to come before you. We get the privilege, the honor to come before you, to listen to your words, to adore you, to worship you, to tell you that you are our God today and that we choose to be your followers. We choose to be your servants, oh God. God, today we thank you because, Father, you tell us that you awaken us every morning, morning by morning, you awaken us to hear as those who are taught that you have opened our ears today to listen. And we, we say to you, God, that we will not be rebellious. We will not turn backwards, oh God. We thank you for your word. We honor you, God. We thank you that, Father, we are the blessed people that come to begin the day with you, that once we come before you and our day begins with you, that it is shaped for the rest of the day, that we have commanded the day, we have commanded this morning, and that, Lord Jesus, you will be Lord today. You will be praised today in our lives. We honor you and we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Good morning. Glory to God in the highest. Hallelujah. Let us go uh, into our time of praise and worship as we worship the kings of kings.
darkness you give hope you restore every heart that is broken and great are you Lord it's your breath and our lungs so we pour Good morning. Now it's time for our general prayer. And our brother, George Mensah, will be leading us in prayer today. Let's proceed in. Brother Mensah, George Mensah, leading us in prayer. Amen, amen. We thank God for his faithfulness. Um, this morning, our general prayers will be um, on our personal welfare. We'll be praying for our personal welfare. Um, Prayer number one, Heavenly Father, thank you for all that you've given me. Thank you for making me fruitful in all things. Let us pray. Oh, Heavenly Father, our Lord and our Master, we thank you. I thank you. Thank you for all that you have given me. 
all that I have and all that I am by, is by your grace, oh Lord, and I thank you. Thank you for making me fruitful in all things. Um, your word in Leviticus 26, 9 says, for I will have respect unto you and make you fruitful and multiply you and establish my covenant with you. Oh, Heavenly Father, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for everything that I have. Thank you for making me fruitful. Thank you for multiplying me. Thank you. Thank you for making me fruitful in all things in Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, prayer number two. Father, give me the wisdom of scripture and empower me by the Holy Spirit to resist temptations and continue to live a life in your service in Jesus' name. Let us pray. Oh, Heavenly Father, I come to you once again. I ask you this morning to grant me wisdom, the wisdom of scripture, the wisdom and knowledge to read and listen and, and understand your scripture and live your scripture, Lord. Empower me by the Holy Spirit to resist all temptations and continue to live a life in your service. In Jesus' mighty name. Your word in Colossians 2, 6 says, so then just as you have received Christ, Jesus as Lord, continue to live in him. Oh, Heavenly Father, I thank you for the gift of life. I thank you for this morning. Father, I ask you to grant me the wisdom and let me live in you. Let, let your word live, live, live in me and let my actions and my words reflect your words that I live. I don't, I, I, I don't, I don't just listen, but I live your words in every way. In Jesus' mighty name we pray, amen. Now, um, prayer number three, Heavenly Father, I want to become more and more like you. Help me to be more like you. Mold me into a disciple worthy of your calling. Now let us pray. Oh, Heavenly Father, I come to you this morning once again, and I ask you that you, you, you bless me and make me one of your own. I want to become more and more like you. Help me to be more and more like, like you. Mold me into a disciple worthy of your calling. In Jesus' mighty name. Father, your word says in Isaiah 64, 8, But now, O Lord, thou art our father. We are the clay, and you, thou art the porter, and we all are the work of thy hands. Father, I'm the clay this morning. Father, I come to you and I ask you to mold me. Mold me to be, to be like you. Mold me just, just as you wish. Mold me so that I, I, my ways are your ways, and that I, I go as you want. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Now, prayer number four. Father, open my mind to receive your word and understand it. Give me the heart and faith to pursue you in truth in life, even when it's unpopular and difficult. Let us pray. Oh, Heavenly Father, our Lord and Master, who gives all understanding, Lord, pray this morning that you open my, my mind to receive your word and understand it and understand it in a special way that I may recall it and use it at all times. Give me the heart and the faith to pursue you in truth in life, even when it's unpopular and difficult. Your word in Psalm 119 verse 18 says, open thou, thou my, mine eyes that I may behold wondrous things out of thy law. And in Hebrews 11, 6, it says, But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Oh, Heavenly Father, I seek you this morning. I ask that you open my mind to receive the, your word and understand it. Grant me the wisdom to understand your word and use it. Give me the heart to pursue you in truth and in life, even when it's unpopular especially when it's unpopular and difficult, that I, I stick to you and I stick with you and I, and I go with you because I understand your word and I'm living your word in every way, in, on, in every day. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Now, prayer number five. Father, give me a longing for the things of your kingdom and not of this world. Help me to live a life worthy of you and to show others the love of Jesus. Well, let us pray. Our Lord and our Master, once again, I come to you this morning. 
Father, I long for the things of your kingdom. Give me the things of your kingdom and not of this world. Help me seek first your kingdom. And I know that with that, everything else will be added. So Father, I come to you this morning and ask you to, to let me see and seek the things of your kingdom. Help me to live a life that is worthy of you and to show others the love of, of Jesus. Your, your word in 1 John 2, 15 says, Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Again, your word says, Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father, which is in heaven. Oh, Father, I seek your kingdom. I seek and I long for the things of your kingdom and not of this world. Let me, let me go after your, your kingdom. Let me go after the things of your kingdom and let my life reflect that so, that so that others who see me may see that I am a follower of you and their lives may be transformed by that. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Amen. Now, prayer number six. Lord, you are the Prince of Peace. I ask for peace that surpasses all understanding to take root in my heart. Make me a resource that other people can rely on to bring joy, love, and peace. Let us pray. Almighty God, you are the Lord, you are a Lord of Lords and the King of Kings. Father, you, you are the one who gives peace, the peace that surpasses all understanding. Lord Jesus, you are the Prince of Peace. I ask you to, to grant me that peace, that peace that only you can provide, that peace that only comes from you, Lord, the peace that others will see and not understand because it is beyond our understanding, Lord. I ask that you give me that peace and make me that resource for other people, that other people can rely on me, that my presence, but my words, my actions may bring joy and peace and love into their lives, oh Lord. Father, your word in Colossians 3.15 says, and let the peace of God rule in your hearts to, to, to which also ye are called in one body and be ye thankful. Father, I pray for that peace this morning. I pray for that peace on everyone on this platform this morning, that you grant us the peace, the peace that only you, the peace that surpasses all understanding, that beyond imagination, Lord, that even in, in the, in the, in the, in the wildest of storms that we will, will have that peace, that I will have that peace, that the peace that surround me, that others will see and, and also and, and just by my presence and by my words and my actions, Lord, that they will experience peace and joy and, and love in their lives. In Jesus' mighty name, pray, amen. Now, prayer number seven. Prayer number seven, uh, Father, I ask you to send forth your mighty word of healing and strength to my household. Let your healing virtues flow through every bone, tissue, and cell in our bodies in Jesus' mighty name. Oh, Heavenly Father, our Lord and our Master, we, we give you all praise and all, all adoration, all glory and honor this morning. Father, this morning I commit my household into your hands, Father. Father, I, I, com I, I commit everyone in my, house, my household, and I ask you to, to bring healing and strength to my household. I pray that every bone, every cell, every tissue, and every individual, everyone in my household, Lord, be healed and strengthened by your grace, Lord. We pray that I commit every, every tissue, every, every sickness, every illness that we are not even aware of into your hands, Lord. I pray that you, you remove every illness and every sickness from every cell, every bone and every tissue within my household in, in, in Jesus' mighty name, Lord. Father, your, your word in Psalm 107, 20 says, he sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their distractions. Again, your word says, and Jesus, immediately knowing in himself that virtue had gone out of him, turned him about in the press and said, who touched my clothes? Lord, again in Luke 6, 6, 19, and the whole multitude sought to touch him for there went virtue out of him and healed them, Lord. Oh, Heavenly Father, I know you are not physically present here this morning, but Father, I ask that you, you touch every cell and every tissue and every bone of everyone on this platform and everyone in my household, Lord, 
that all illness is being uprooted from our bone cells and tissues, Lord, that we will give you glory and we will praise you because, because just by touching you, just by touching your garments, we know that we are healed. And that we pray that you will heal every individual, everyone that is suffering from every sickness or illness, Lord, that you will prove those illnesses, that you, you, you will remove every ounce of, of bacteria or viruses, anything that is causing us harm, Lord, you take them out and root them out. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Um, now, prayer number eight. Father, give me the wisdom to be responsible. Give me the heart of a steward so I can be a good and faithful servant in your house. In Jesus' mighty name. Let us pray. Oh, Father, this morning I come to you once again, Lord. You are my Lord and you are my master. Father, this morning I'm, I'm asking that you grant me wisdom. The wisdom that the wisdom that you granted King Solomon to rule his kingdom, Lord, I'm asking for that wisdom. That you, the wisdom to be a responsible individual, to be a responsible Christian, Lord, to be a, a responsible follower of your word, Lord. I grant that you, I pray that you grant me that wisdom. Give me the heart of a steward, a steward that I may take I may, I may take good care of everything that you've trusted into my care, Lord, so that I can be a good and faithful servant in your house and in Jesus' name. Lord, your word in Deuteronomy 30, 16 says, for I am commanding you today to love the Lord your God to walk in his ways and to keep his commands, statutes, and ordinances so that you may live and multiply and the Lord your God may bless you in the land you are entering to possess. In Jesus' mighty name, Lord, this morning I, I, I once again ask you for that wisdom, the wisdom that only you can provide, Lord. I pray that you grant me that wisdom to be a great steward of all the possessions that you've granted me, Lord, that I be a great follower of yours. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Thank you very much, uh, Brother Mensa. Our Bible reading today will be taken from 2 Corinthians chapter 3, 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 1 through 11. And we have our sister, Margaret McDonald, as she will be reading for us. Sister Margaret, please, you are on. Good morning. Good morning. 2 Corinthians 3, 1 to 11. I'm reading from a, a new international version. And we, are we beginning to command ourselves again? Or do we need, like some people, letters of recommendation to you or from you? You yourself are a letter written on our hearts, known and read by everyone, by everybody. You show that you are a letter from Christ by result of our ministry, written not with ink, but with the spirit of the living God, not on tablets of stone, but on tablets of human hearts. Such confidence as this is, our, our, is ours through Christ before God. Not that we are competent in ourselves to claim anything for ourselves, but our heart, but our competency come from God. He has made us competent as ministers of new covenant, not of the letter, but of the spirit. For the letter kills, but the spirit gives life. Now, now if the ministry that brought death, which was engraved in letters on stone, came with glory, so that the Israelites could not look steadily at the face of Moses because of, the, because of its glory, fading through, fading though it was, will not the ministry of the spirit be more glorious? If the ministry that commands man is glorious, how much more glorious is the ministry that brings righteousness? For what was glorious as no glory now in comparison with the in comparison with surpassing glory and if if what was fading away came with glory how much greater is the glory of that which lasts amen 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 thank you very much sister uh the word of god says uh some 119 
Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Today we have the man of God in our midst and let us welcome Pastor Stevens from Denver, Colorado as he brings us the ministration of the word. We welcome you, sir. Thank you so much. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, everybody. Can you hear me? Good morning, sir. Yes, we can. Thank you. Uh, my name is uh, Brother Stefan from Denver, Colorado. I'm so uh, pleased to be among you and uh, privileged to be given uh, this opportunity to share the word of God. So uh, we're going to share uh, the word of God briefly. And uh, our verse of uh, emphasis is on uh, 2 Corinthians chapter, as uh, the, sister, the sister read, uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 3. And uh, I am going to repeat again uh, this uh, verse 3, 2 Corinthians chapter 3 and the verse 3. I am going to just repeat it again. Clearly, you are an epistle of Christ, ministered by us, written not with ink, but the Spirit of the living God, not on the table of stone, but on the table of uh, flesh that is of the heart, amen. And uh, there is uh, just uh, two things that I wanna mention in this uh, uh, lecture. The three things that I've noticed, the Bible says that uh, the Holy Spirit is uh, writing a life of Christ. That's the first thing that uh, I've noticed in this uh, uh, reading, that uh, the Apostle Paul is uh, saying that the Holy Spirit is writing a life of Christ in the heart of everybody. Because he's saying that we are the epistles, which is not written in uh, like on any stone, but instead, in the heart of man. And the second thing is that uh, these readings of uh, the life of Christ is in the inner chambers of believers, in our inner experience of each and every believer. And the third thing is that uh, this biography of Jesus Christ is for all men to read. As we walking by, as we are with our friends, wherever we can find ourselves at work, in our families, in our marriage, in our houses, wherever we can be. So the Apostle Paul is reminding us and reminding each and every one of us that as we walking by, as we living, we should remember, always remember these three things. That we are a life of Christ, which is being written. And we should remember again that this life of Christ, which is being written, it's not something that uh, is written like in your forehead. It's not something that you are carrying in the paper, but the way you conduct yourself, the way you talk, the way you comport yourself. When people looking at, like are looking at you, they should always remind, they should always be attracted by something. They said, no, a natural man cannot live like this. This is a son of God. This is a woman of God. This is a man of God, just by the experience, by, just by uh, the way we live, the experience that we have, uh, we have written on our heart, on our inner life, on our inner experience of uh, believers. And the third thing that we should always remember that, that this life, this kind of life that is being written on us, it's not a life that we are carrying on from uh, father to son, uh, father to son, no. This is the life that the Holy Spirit himself has written on us, amen. So this kind of life, believers, the Bible says, only those who are born again can receive this kind of life. It's like a book. The Bible says it's not written on the stone. 
in the same, remember like when the Bible was uh, written, was written like some scriptures, some uh, like writings were on uh, the parchment, but they could not leave a parchment, they could not leave a stone and take this word of God and go and reach it on the world. It, 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 it could not remain, it could not remain. In the same way, the word of God, the spirit of God can only be engraved on a new man. And that new man is not the one that we are seeing, it's the one that is hidden. It's your inner life, your inner person that is hidden. And uh, it, there is a requirement, you should be born again for that kind of life to be written on you. This is the main requirement. Remember Jesus is asking, I mean, he was responding to Nicodemus. It's like, he was telling that unless a person is born from above, he cannot see the kingdom of God. This was the biggest requirement. He was telling that, hey, listen, you are an epistle. I know, of course, but unless you are, a, you are born from above, we can written something on you. We can burn this kind of information into your heart. If you are not born again, if you are not a genuine child of God, this kind of Christ life cannot be engraved. Cannot, this information cannot be burnt on you. And this is our prayer this morning, beloved, that we should remember we have a kind of life written on everybody. We are the witness of Christ, not just because Christ has, uh, I mean, died and uh, resurrected. That's how we say, hey, listen, we are the witness. Hey, listen, the, the kind of, uh, uh, that kind of Christ life is here. No, we are the witness of God too testify to witness this kind of life. When people are looking at us, they just assume, assume that these are the Christians. The way he speaks, remember when they called the Christian for the first time, they called them because of their way of living. And the people just look say, these, these are behaving like Christ. These people are talking like Christ. And when uh, that woman look at Peter, when Peter was denying, they say, even though you are denying, even though you are trying to stay away, but the way you speak, the way you are walking, it looks like you were with Christ. Hallelujah. It's because the life of Christ was written. People could, could, could read the life of Christ in the forehead of Peter. No matter how much we can deny, no matter how much we can try to pretend to be that in that uh, category of life, but if you are the seed of God, if you are a genuine born again, a life of God shall be written on you. And uh, in the last scripture, I think it was in uh, Romans chapter three, no, Romans chapter eight and uh, the verse 29, the Bible says that for whom he for knew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brothers. Uh, brother. That's how we become like, when the life of Christ, when this spiritual life of Christ is being engraved, is being written on us, then we can display a kind of a life. Then we can display our Christianity then we can display the life, the spiritual life that we are carrying. The Bible says that for whom he for knew, for those who has been known before the foundation of this world, the Bible says that we've been predestined to be conforming, to be having a life, to be living Christ-like, Christ-like. So this is my prayer to our brothers and sisters this morning that we have a life of Christ waiting on us. And uh, the highest expectation from our father, our creator, is that we may display this life. We may be a witness, not just to speak about his death and resurrection, but when people are looking at us, 
uh, they can see the reflection of uh, the life of Christ, and then we can be uh, become the sons of God. May the Lord bless you, and I hope uh, this uh, word of God will be carried in our hearts so that uh, we can display it wherever we can be at work in our family. We should be uh, indeed the uh, witness of uh, our Christ Jesus. Amen. 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 Thank you very much, Pastor Stevens. Uh, that is the commandments of God, not from men. Mm -hmm. Proverbs 3 says, tie them to your fingers. Mm -hmm. write them on the tablets of your heart. Amen. Now it's time for our personal prayer and your personal moment with your own father. So let's go to him with words and present our request before him. Thank you.
Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. That scripture in another translation says, your very life are a letter that anyone can read by just looking at you. Everything you say, what you speak, how you portray yourself, how you relate with the people you work with, with your family, your life in general is being read daily. What will they be reading or what are they reading when they see you? That's why Paul says, if I, when you read that fully, you understand it because Paul says, from the message transitions, he said, you yourselves are all the endorsement we need because the proof of our ministries, I'm paraphrasing now, are being read through you. He said, you yourselves are all the endorsement we need. Your very lives are a letter that anyone can read by just looking at you. That is the transformation, the newness of life, the goodness in life. You know, kingdom lifestyle, they read it, they see it through us. May your life be a true epistle of Christ, written, be read by men. And you have to give yourself that challenge. Christ must be known, must be seen, must be heard through me. My life must speak it. My life must testify. The life that I live. Glory to God. We thank God for that. That was uh, Pastor Stefan, not Stephen. <laughs> Stefan. Yes. <Pastor> He's <laughs> a French man. Don't mind him speaking English. I don't know what he's speaking English for. <laughs> God bless you, Pastor. Uh, amen, Pastor. Amen. Thank you so much. Uh, multiply His grace upon your life and prosper the work that He has committed into your hands. Amen. Glory amen. to God. We thank God again for another day in His presence. Go reflecting the goodness of God today. Go reflecting the peace of God that He gives, even in the midst. You know, the Bible says the waves were throwing all over, the boat was being capsized, He was just there sleeping. That was peace unspeakable. That was peace unheard of. That was peace that the world cannot understand because he knew that he was undrawnable. <clears throat> May that order of peace possess your heart as you go today. That no evil befalls you. In nothing is said terrified by your adversary. Nothing intimidates you because you know you are already over. You have overcome them already. So we are good cheer, little children, because we have overcome them already. So go manifesting the overcomer's lifestyle as you go today. Whatever that is contrary coming against you, I want you to know you have overcome already. That's the beauty of Christ in us. He overcame and gave us that mandate, that right to keep ruling over. So go in peace this morning, ruling over in the name of Jesus. Remember, this program runs Monday through Friday, so that means we'll be back again on this platform, 5 a.m. Mountain Time tomorrow, and it's going to be a great time. And of course, by Friday, we'll be closing this year. Our time flies, they say. <laughs> Glory to God. Glory to God. Go in peace this morning. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, let your hand of peace rest upon everyone here in me this morning. Let that embodiment of peace, overwhelm, your peace, overwhelm your people as they go. They are nothing terrified, afraid of nothing, overwhelmed by nothing, but the overcomer's lifestyle manifests today. 
is read through our actions and all that we do today. In the name of Jesus. Today is blessed for you. It's a day with great opening for you. Doors open for you. In the name of Jesus. Let's share the goodness together this morning. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives. And we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. God bless you. See you tomorrow. Jesus is Lord.